Hi everyone, this is a video all about Eurobike 2025, made in association with Test Pilots. So let's have a look now and see all the different stuff that was on show at Eurobike that I think is pretty interesting. And the first company I want to have a look at, or the first motor on display was from Ananda, is the M230. It came in at 2.8 kilos, that's 80 newton meters or 100 newton meters. Could put out, I think, around 800 watts. So quite a powerful system. I have tried this system, not my favorite style on on, honestly, but at the same time, uh, it's a reliable system. It's fitted on a lot of motors, and Ananda produce hundreds of thousands of motors for many different companies. So they are a major bike producer from the Far East. It sort of integrates well into the frame. Obviously, the batteries follow the standard kind of batteries, and the 100 newton meter model is obviously the number of the show. We've heard that said before, but basically, 100 newton meters. Let's see, do we really need it? Okay, Bafang, they're probably one of the most famous uh, companies out there for motors with lots and lots of uh, e-bikes with their motors on it. They do all kinds of uh, different systems from low power up to high power. But we did find one of the Stuart bikes and it had a Bafang hub motor. Now I have been riding some hub motor e-bikes recently. I personally think they're quite interesting for urban use. They're very smooth. Uh, they don't have a lot of torque on the initial pedal strokes because uh, they obviously have to spin up because they're working directly around the axle. But once you're moving, they do go quite well and they are very efficient. So for an urban bike, especially in a place where there's not many hills, I suggest one of these motors could be quite an interesting option for you. So if you're looking for a bike with efficient range and Bafang seem to be the people that know how to make that system work well. Big news from the show uh, was Commonsal with their Meta SX with a DJI motor. So Commonsal now have a DJI motor in addition to Bosch SX motor and also their Bosch CX motor. Between the two systems I would still prefer Bosch because uh, obviously, the service support is well known. However, Commonsal is a very important brand. They have a long history and they will not put themselves where they don't believe there is service and opportunity. They are mostly now an online store, so you'll be buying directly from them. And obviously, I'm not quite sure how the service will work in regards to motor systems with an online brand like uh, Commonsal. I'm sure they'll have service partners around Europe. Obviously, that's something for DJI to set up. The bike itself looks pretty good. They're aiming at the lightweight EMTB uh, style there. And the battery system is their 800 watt hour battery. And it's integrated into the aluminium frame. The battery is non-removable. I think a lot of these brands are launching with these motors, but you probably won't be able to get to try them until 2026. So let's see what happens. I'm sure this bike will probably be one of the better DJI bikes on the market. E2 drives. So they had a bike there and it had on it an Uwuru uh, motor and that made quite a lot of noise at the show. A motor which is all about constant velocity. So it, has, it maintains a constant cadence. Therefore, you're able to keep pedaling where well, you set the cadence level and the motor will adapt. It's a motor gearbox drive unit. So that means it's centered, all that weight is centered around the bottom bracket. It will have a belt drive on it and it removes unsprung mass from the rear wheel and centers the weight in its gearbox-like system over the bottom bracket. That's important because at the end of the day, we don't really want too much weight on the rear wheel, so it will make the suspension perform a little bit better. And also, it'll keep that weight balance low on the bike, so you probably have quite a lot of great maneuverability, a little bit like the GLP-3 from Lapierre. I love that bike as well. I'm expecting, obviously, uh, this bike to take a while to get to market. But at the end of the day, don't forget, you'll still need the same battery weight and size as the other systems. So uh, I look forward to trying it and seeing what it's actually like in reality. Hepa or Hefa have the GoBow equipped 101. So I have actually, now the, the motor, although it says P101 Hefa on it, it's actually a GoBow motor from the Shenzhen Chinese giant that produces controllers and displays and electronic control systems for motorbikes. They have like a huge part of the market. So it's a very important company. I've actually test ridden one of these motors quite a bit. And I have to say, it's got some interesting characteristics. So it functions more on a cadence-based rather than the torque-based. So it has 
torque response to your inputs, but you can feel when riding it that it does actually give you more cadence support. So you can actually take the pressure off the pedals and keep spinning, and the motor will keep driving you forward. It is a powerful system, it has 100 Newton meters. The range is pretty good. I found that the system was quite efficient, it's got brilliant heat management, and they also have coming a 101 Pro or a 100 Pro, which will have 120 Newton meters in boost mode and 110 Newton meters normally. Do you really need them on the trail? Well, I found when I was riding the system, 80 Newton meters was pretty much more than enough for most of the things I wanted to do. Probably a few occasions when switching into 100 Newton meters was helpful if I was extremely tired or extremely lazy. Okay, this is the one I really wanted to talk about, Marle, the design of their motor, and it's very similar to the DJI system. And I do expect them to probably steal the market a little bit from under DJI's nose, as they have experience directly in the market already because they were a major supplier uh, of e-bike motors to the global market in America and in Europe and that was through Specialized because all the Specialized lightweight motors are made by Mahler. Obviously the motor design itself is very similar to DJI, it uses a planetary gear system so you've got a massive step up there and that gives you quite an efficient compact design and also in combination with their slot fill rate on the coils they have a very uh, powerful system, it's about 850 watts peak. Now they don't say if that's at the wheel or at the motor or at the battery so I'm not quite sure where that 850 watts is. It also has the 105 or 110 newton meters so again up there with the DJI. It is probably what I consider the main competitor design wise to the DJI motor. I expect it to be a very strong system, definitely one to watch for. I will try and get hold of one of these as soon as possible because I've heard it is like a 125cc up a hill. So let's see and uh, I look forward to trying it. Okay, Maxon, We're probably one of the three companies with compact motor designs. There's Maxon ZF and there's another one which I'm gonna mention at the end, which is called Utopia, of an interesting compact design. Their prototype on display is great for lightweight EMTBs. It has a 90 Newton meters and also it weighs in at two kilos. It's apparently gonna be one of the lightest weight on the market. The, the 90 Newton meter, 600 watt, 700 watt peak power, you still need a big battery to deliver the current necessary to use these motors. So don't expect a lightweight battery. Battery weight is designed by the cell types you're using and the cell densities which are on the market. And most brands are using similar cell technology, obviously from different manufacturers. The compact design will improve suspension layout and pivot point layout around the bottom bracket and that's where the advantage of these compact drive system comes in it's the bike design the actual look when they can put the pivots more easily where they want so mustache were there as well with their MGU drive unit from Pinion, the E12. Uh, honestly, Mostache are uh, the first bike company where I think I'd like to try that bike with that drive unit. I recently rode one of these drive units and although it was an interesting experience and quite good, I would also say I was riding on an extremely heavyweight bike. It was a Nikolai and it was built for sort of cruising off-road long distance, so it really wasn't the right bike to drive, to test it, to see what the unsprung mass was like. At the end of the day, again, unsprung mass, no weight on the rear wheel, no cassette, etc centering all the weight in the center keeping it simple or complicated depending if you think a gearbox and motor together is a complicated or simple design we don't know maybe it's low maintenance obviously there isn't much uh, feedback yet on how this system is functioning in the real world in the mud and the wet and the dust of northern and southern Europe so I look forward to seeing more of these motors available and the ability to try one. So definitely Mustache, if you're out there, send us one and we'll get on it and give our opinion on it. Yamaha, so Yamaha quietly launched their PWX Fords. Well, I think they've made a bit of a mistake in the last year when they withdrew from the mountain bike market. Obviously, they were trying, they were supplying a full bike with all of the different components on there and full service, a bit like they would with a motorbike system. Only problem is, obviously, something didn't go quite as to plan, I suspect, and they withdrew from the US market. They're still present in Europe. They're obviously trying to ride out the downer in the e-bike market at the moment, and they've also just combined forces with bros so let's be interesting to see what they come up with also bros were there with their new system i'm a little confused if it's going to be all yamaha all bros how these two companies are going to integrate obviously service is a big thing and they can supply 
high quality service from their dealer network across the world. Yamaha have probably one of the biggest dealer networks in the world. Again, the motor has 100 Newton meters. The only problem I see with that is you still need a big battery to suck all that juice from those cells and give you that 100 Newton meters, 800 watts. Yes, 800 watts, Yamaha are pushing the limit. Again, we don't know where is that 800 watts? Is it at the battery, at the motor, or at the wheel? We need something uh, of some kind of standardization that tells us all about that so we can uh, know what we're talking about when we talk about peak power. In Rockville, who had a DJI motorized bike called the Rex. Now, I've actually already ridden this bike, but I rode it with the Shimano motor. So I'm a little confused why they released the Shimano version and now are switching to the DJI, because that could cause a few problems with supplies, I imagine, because they might have a whole backlog of Shimano motored bikes especially with the market interest being in the DJI. I have to say though, that bike is a very, very good bike. So if it's got the same ride feel and smoothness about it with the DJI, which is a little bit bigger in my understanding physically compared to the Shimano system, I would be interested to ride the system. Now I might get one hopefully towards the end of the summer. If I do get one, obviously I will put it out there as soon as I can, a test on this bike. Although I do have a test of the actual bike already done. Interesting product, it's got its own integrated battery. Uh, the BMZ, which is the first system to use the DJI motor with an external battery supplier. It's a carbon cased battery. 860 watts, absolutely brilliant for uh, range, let's say. Very dense, very compact, fits in the frame in an amazingly well-engineered way. Have to say, probably Rockfield have the best engineering of all bikes on the market, and they move fast. So they do like to do things and develop things quickly with high quality tech. I wanted to talk about the Utopia. Uh, they're the last brand to mention. This is a super compact drive unit. I don't really know much about it. So if I just have a look at their video now, and I'm just gonna react to it, I can see it's like a concentric design, follows very similarly the ZF style of motor, probably uses a wave motor inside it. Very interesting. It looks like it has good sealing characteristics. And again, this style of motor will be able to allow the bike designer to basically put the pivots where they want. So that's a fantastic point of these motors and their design. It can also be used on road bikes or gravel bikes or well, whatever kind of bike you want where you don't want the design to be particularly ostentatious. It looks absolutely fantastic on the frame and it has a really easy way of connecting to the frame as well. And I think that might be the key for home maintenance, a small compact motor which you can easily attach and detach. The Utopia looks like it fits the bill. A lot of detail there in the video. I mean, I haven't gone into lots of numbers. I've wanted to more react to the video and give you some sort of feedback based on my impressions of riding some of these systems and how they ride. I would say that we don't need to get wrapped up in the 100 Newton meter, 120 Newton meter range and all those powerful watts because at the end of the day, the battery tech is still not there to supply us lightweight batteries with high density cells that can supply all these power to give us an acceptable range. Obviously, if you're a heavier weight rider, it's good to have that extra support and you probably won't notice the weight. I would caution people, don't get too wound up in the numbers. I just ridden the ZF, it's a 90 Newton meter setup. It has 600 watts and it rode with the same sensations I've had with motors that have more Newton meters and more power. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Go and visit the uh, website testpilot.bike and also give us a comment below and let me know what you think about our collaboration. Thanks for watching and see you next time.